made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Universal Traction Systems, Vantage Point Marketing, Imaging Services, Zingit Solutions, Cairo Thin, Dr. Peter Goldman's Zone School of Healing, and Everest Chiropractic Boot Camp. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 72 of Cairo Hustle. I'm your co-host Luke Millette, and if Jim's audio sounds a little weird, bear with us. We're working remotely this time. And here's your host, Jim Chester. Hey everybody, so today we have the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Ryan Bones. And if you want to know more about how to have an upstart practice of your dreams, please listen to this episode. So Dr. Ryan, what is your chiropractic story and what influenced you to become a chiropractor? Oh man, I tell you what, uh, my, chiro- my chiropractic story started when I was in probably fifth grade or so. Uh, I am not from a chiropractic family like many, many, many chiropractors out there. Um, I come from a very long line of farmers in beautiful, sunny, and freezing cold rural South Dakota. And uh, when I was playing little kid basketball, uh, I took a charge because that was me. I was always the one trying to take charge when you were like 10 years old and the ref never called it. Uh, yeah, that was me. I took a charge, hurt my SI joint, uh, could like barely walk. And thankfully, the town of Parker, South Dakota, in all 1,000 people, uh, one of them was a chiropractor. And he was a very good chiropractor by the name of Dr. John Sheequin, an old school Palmer grad. And my parents took me to him. Uh, he fixed me right up. I started going regularly, kind of fell in love with the, the idea of chiropractic, just that, hey, this, this dude's helping people purely with his hands. Uh, he's not prescribing medications. You know, he, he doesn't look miserable like I see most doctors look. Uh, this guy looks like he kind of has it figured out. You know, runs his own business, can go to his kids' sporting events or whatever. You know, like, I, I really like it. It's, this guy's cool. He's got it figured out. Uh, as I started getting up you know, towards junior high, uh, I wanted to kind of figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, everybody suggested I be a doctor because of my last name. And so, and so I finally started kind of looking into it, and I was like, well, there's only one, really one type of doctor that I'd want to be, and that's a chiropractor. So I started talking to Dr. Sheequin about kind of how it works and, and what to do, and he was stoked like you know, any chiropractor is when you have a patient that says, I think I might want to be a chiropractor. Uh, and so he really, he really sold me on the idea. And I remember thinking about it one day when I was driving a tractor across the field in the most cliche way possible. Uh, and it just clicked. It, it, I had this borderline dusty epiphany uh, of, I'm going to be a chiropractor. Like, it absolutely makes sense. This is what I want. And from that day forward when I was like 12 or 13, uh, that was the plan. And so I went to undergrad in Nebraska, um, got my biological science degree, went to Parker University. I worked as a chiropractic, uh, I guess I was a chiropractic assistant slash office manager for three and a half years at Lincoln Chiropractic Center in Lincoln, Nebraska, go Cornhuskers. Hmm. Uh, not this year though, we're miserable. Um, and really got to see kind of the miracles firsthand and work in a subluxation based chiropractic practice. Uh, absolutely just, just, fell deeply and deeply in love with the, the principle and the philosophy of chiropractic. Um, Dr. Pete Wavers, Dr. Pete out there, hey, props to you. Thank you for really kicking me in the butt in my chiropractic journey. Um, and he told me to go to Parker, so I went to Parker. Um, had an awesome four years there. And uh, then graduated December 2015, moved up to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, where I didn't know anybody, and, uh, and opened my practice three months later. And since then, it's been about two and a half years. Uh, I've met my wonderful, wonderful wife, Cassidy, and she's the one who really runs our practice. I just take care of people. Um, she's uh, the practice manager, and uh, we take care of people up here in beautiful Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So that's that's the Bones chiropractic story in a nutshell right there. That's awesome. Yeah, and as I've gotten to know you over the past couple of years, it's been quite the journey that you've been on. I know you what makes you a little unique is how you opened up your practice and had so many practice members already scheduled to be new patients. Uh, walk us through that journey a little bit about how you got to that positioning in your community. Uh, it was, it was a, a combination of a, many amazing things. 
Um, and you know, a lot of people saw that, you know, or hear that number like a hundred and I think it was 103, uh, new patients pre book before I opened, uh, we had like a, about a two and a half, three week wait list when the doors opened April 4th, 2016. Um, I'd only lived in town for three months and you know, people see that and they think, wow, what an overnight success. Uh, but truly it, it was not. Um, you know, as most quote unquote overnight successes are not. Um, if you rewind all the way back to undergrad, frankly, is where it started, um, to where I was helping run that, that practice in Lincoln, getting an idea of how systems and procedures work. Uh, going to, uh, I remember going to award success system seminar when I was probably Oh, I remember I was 20 years old because we snuck into bars. I do remember that. Um, Dr. Pete, yep, sorry to call you out. Uh, but yeah, we snuck into bars together in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, and it was at a Ward Success Seminar System. And I got to kind of hear that first idea of you know how to market, how to build value in your practice, how to build a practice. Um, fast forward then into chiropractic school at Parker. Uh, got connected to some great mentors, um, Dr. Michael Viscarelli, Dr. Jeremy Hess, the AMP program, uh, helped start the club there on campus at Parker and was involved with AMP for a number of years. Uh, they, they helped give me a number of more incredible tools to go out into the community, how to connect with people, um, how to get things going quickly from the start. Uh, and then when I got to Coeur d'Alene, uh, thankfully because of you know, having this dream and this vision of opening my own practice for, at that point, damn near almost seven or eight years, um, I had put in the time to prepare while I was in school. I put in the time before I needed to, to create a business plan, to have uh, people double check that business plan and give me feedback on it, to get my bank loan and to have my office space signed before I ever even graduated. Um, and then that allowed me when I got to Coeur d'Alene to 100% fully immerse myself into the marketing aspect and the community aspect mm -hmm. rather than uh, be swinging a hammer or painting a wall. You know, I put it in my, my loan, my business loan, that I would be marketing full time for three months. And so it not only covered you know, my personal expenses, but it covered a, a contractor and an electrician and a painter and everything that I needed so that I could check in on the space. But my highest value certainly wasn't, you know, putting outlet covers on in my space. It was being out in the community and getting to meet people and getting to make connections. Uh, and so when I had that three months, I literally did nothing but make connections, market, network, build my social media following, uh, build my community authority and presence did screenings, did talks, did lunch and learns, went to fundraisers, shook hands, had personal meetings, and did it all from the, the perspective of not here's who I am, here's my business card, I'm gonna be having a grand opening, you should come in, you should go, you know, you should check out chiropractic, but quite the opposite. Um, I went into every meeting and every event to just kind of get to know people and actually remember names and build connections and learn about who they were, what they did, how I could help them in the community and how I could support them. Uh, and in doing so, made a lot of really deep connections that ended up paying off and still to this day, two and a half years later, still are paying off um, through an incredible family that I have in this community that is truly what led to such a hot start in practice um, because we had about 50 patients pre-booked from events, from screenings, things like that in the couple months before I opened. But then I threw a massive party, a massive grand opening, and about half the damn town, it seemed like, showed up because I showed up for them, for their grand openings, for their events. And so we had about 250, 300 uh plus people come through our grand opening in only a couple hours. We had a we had red carpet rolled out and we had a line out the door of people waiting to get into this office to get a tour. Um, and we had live music and raffles and, and uh, free drinks. And, and so after the night was done, 
we had booked another like 55 new patients from that event alone, um, just the grand opening, just the tour, hearing me speak, getting an opportunity to sign up for an appointment. Uh, and so it was those relationships that I built and people who were coming out to support me uh, that allowed me to really explode into practice that next Monday. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, the, the more I think about what you've done, is it's not just for a new grad, it's for somebody that might be, you know, stumbling in practice, somebody that might not have all their systems. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the unique part of that, though, listening to that story, is there's no, there's no supplementation for hard work. Oh my God, that is the freaking truth. It was, and it was hard. You know, a lot of people saw, saw the outside in of, you know, my social media where I'm, I'm at all this stuff and they saw the, uh, the cool meetings I was having and they saw the events we were sponsoring and they saw, they saw all the good stuff. Um, one of the things that I, I think I did fairly well and that actually I think made people fall in love with my story more than anything was actually when I would post the struggles and would post how hard it was and would post, you know, things like, oh, my, my leaded drywall finally arrived late today and it was destroyed. Uh, the forklift had put a fork right through the middle of my leaded drywall and we had to send it back and wait for more. And it was coming from California and it was, it was devastating because we we're already behind schedule. We we're, we're worried that we weren't even going to like, you know, make it in time for the grand opening and all this stuff was coming. And, and it was just one of those where everything had, had built up so much that I just like broke down. And I, I remember, I remember putting in the post, like I, I cried today cause this was just the little straw that kind of broke me today. Um, and that was one of the most engaging posts I had out there. And I had so many people message me like, man, thank you for sharing the struggles of this part, you know, cause I'm going through it or I am about to be going through it. Um, or I want to do something like this and it's nice to know that it's not all sunshine and rainbows um, because it, it really, really wasn't. And I worked myself both emotionally and physically harder than I ever had before in three months. And while it was all worth it, uh, looking back, I realized that there were a lot of things that I didn't do well, like didn't take care of myself and didn't make time for myself to recharge uh, or even eat or exercise or anything um, that ended up making it a lot harder than it had to be. But it was it was hard, hard work. Yeah, and when you share that story, I mean, people are gonna learn from that. And I appreciate you being so transparent, sharing your struggles with people, because now that you've uh, turned that corner and you've learned from all those, uh, you know, those processes that you went through, um, something else I think that makes you absolutely unique is the TED Talks that you've done. And I, I don't know how many people know that you've done that, but um, that led you to uh, even greater things that we'll fall into as we speak. But um, let's talk a little bit about the uniqueness of those TED Talks. I, I would love to. Uh, the first one was the was actually my chiropractic TED Talk. Uh, that was while I was, in fact, still in chiropractic school. Uh, I. It's funny enough, I, I, you know, I'll have to actually, I want to rewind a little bit um, to kind of talk about how that opportunity came to be, because it's a story that I don't think I've actually shared with a lot of people. Um, you know, a lot of people may have, maybe have heard that I've done a TED Talk, but I get asked more than anything, how, how did I get that opportunity? Um, and the story is, is kind of funny enough, because it really was born out of a really shitty situation. Um, and a lot of people maybe not don't know, but I was actually uh, married previously. I got married to uh, a girl I met in chiropractic school. We did it all through chiropractic school. We got married uh, about a year before I graduated. Long story short, um, about six months later, things went south, and she ended up uh, going a going we'll put say going a different direction with her life. Um, and I was devastated. I remember being like, kind of like a recluse where I didn't really want to get out of the house for anything. Uh, but finally, my brother from another mother uh, and chiropractic classmate, Dr. Jake Hyde, in, currently in West Palm Beach, Florida, props to Jake Hyde, uh, drug me out of the house. And he said, we're going to go to this, we're going to go to this networking event. Um, it was a Dallas Catholic Young Professionals networking event 
and he drug me out of the house uh, against my will, and we went to this networking event. I was not in any mood to be surrounded by people, uh, but we went, and I was talking to this woman in the corner, and we were talking about, she had all these questions about chiropractic, um, which, if anybody knows me, I will talk your ear off for an hour and a half if you ask me about chiropractic, especially if I've had a couple drinks. <laughs> um, and so I was just pouring my heart out about how amazing chiropractic is and about how important it was for people to get checked. And she really didn't know anything about it. And so, I mean, I was going into the philosophy and I was going into the history and I was going into everything. Like I was just like word vomiting all about it. Um, and then she said, wow, you're, you're really, really passionate about chiropractic. And I was like, absolutely. It's my, it's my life. And she's like, have you ever, have you ever spoken um, about chiropractic in, you know, in front of people? And I was like, no, not really. Um, and she said, well, I think you should. You're, you're, you're really good about it. And she said, I, I happen to be um, on the, let's see, I'm trying to remember her exact position, but um, she said, I'm with TEDx SMU over here at Southern Methodist University, and I really want you to speak for us. And I was like, excuse me, what now? Because <laughs> I'd watched TED Talks, I, I knew all about it, and I loved them. And I was, I mean, I was very, very taken aback. And I kind of thought it was one of those, like, in the moment, like, oh, yeah, you should talk. It would be great. But then, like, that would be the end of it, right? And it would just kind of fade away into the sun. Uh, but about two weeks later, she emailed me, and she said, hey, application's open today. Here's your application. Please, I really hope you'd still be interested in speaking. I think you would do an amazing job. Please fill this out. You know, film your video and send it in. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll take the shot. I don't, I don't really expect to get selected. Um, and so I filmed my, my little interview, uh, filled out the questions, wrote about chiropractic, and, and I needed to have kind of an idea of what would, what would my talk be about? What was my idea worth sharing? And I really went uh, towards the idea that we all have our, a superpower within us, innate intelligence. Like we all have a superpower. And they, they loved it. Um, they asked me if I, well, for long story short, a couple months go by and then I get the notification that said, you've been selected to speak at TEDx SMU. Wow. I was freaking over the moon. I could not believe it. I also became very terrified because for those two months, like I wasn't like preparing for it or anything. I was just like, oh yeah, I turned in my interview, whatever. Right. <laughs> and then it, then it became real. Then it was like, oh my God, I actually have to do this. And then I was like freaking out. I was like, I have to write it. I have to memorize it. Like, oh my God, how much time do I have? And I had, I think I had like two months to prepare. But <laughs> I was so nervous, um, instantly nervous. And so uh, they asked, that, well, we actually have two events going on that day. We have TEDx SMU, which is for adults. And we have TEDx SMU kids. And it's going to be for kids. It's going to be the same amount of people. Um, there's going to be about 750 uh, to a thousand people in the audience Jesus. and I was like oh my god I'm what um, but they said would you like to speak to adults or would you like to speak to the kids and I thought first of all I didn't even know that they had TEDx uh, kids I thought that was really rad and then I also thought man if I'm going to have an impact with this talk who, who better to speak to than kids as far as what chiropractic is and the fact that we have a superpower I was like it's perfect for the kids and so I was like, I'll, I'll speak to TEDx kids. And they're like, great, that's fantastic. Um, you know, here's the date. And then they set me up with like a speaker coach. I had to go in and we had these trainings. We had all this stuff. And it was, it was really, really helpful. But um, I really refined the talk down to what innate intelligence is and what it does and how our bodies aren't just designed to, you know, our nervous system's not just designed to move us through the world, but protect us from it as well. Um, and then link that back to, uh, the spine and how there are people who take care of your superpower and they're called chiropractors. Um, and fast forward to the day of, um, I remember literally having to go to the bathroom before I went out, like, like 15 minutes before I went out. Cause I had like pitted through my button up shirt in, in massive, massive quantity. Cause I was so nervous. I'd never done anything like this before. Um, and, but I got out on stage, um, about a minute in, I made a joke and I, it didn't, it wasn't supposed to be that funny, but apparently the kids loved it cause they, I got, it got a big laugh. I remember thinking, oh wow, that was, you know, bigger laugh than I expected. And then I paused for a second 
and then had no clue what I was supposed to say next. <laughs> I mean, complete and utter, just I mean, flush mind. Like I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything. So I stood there, and then the long, you know, you, one of those things where it seems like, seems like it's an hour to you, but it's probably like 15 seconds. I stood there for freaking ever. It seemed like trying to think of my next words, could not think of it. So I started winging it. This is a lot of story. A lot of people don't know, by the way. Um, started winging it. Just started talking about innate intelligence. Just started talking about. I was like, "Come on, Bones, you know this. Like, you know chiropractic." Um, meanwhile, I'm about to like throw up. I'm looking at the exit sign over the exit <laughs> door, like 15 feet away from me, going like, "I could just leave." Um, but I thought, "No way. This is this is too important. I have I have chiro- the profession is watching. My family is watching. I have to do this. I have to talk about. I have to get the message out there to these kids. I don't care if I'm going to freaking wing it. I'm just going to do it." So I started talking about chiropractic. And after about two minutes of complete and utter, not nonsense, but not anything what I was supposed to be like on my script about, um, I, I get to where I was and I was like, oh my God, that's right. And then I just, and then I kept going, I went right back into it. And I ended up killing the last eight minutes of the talk. Um, and thank God to the power of editing, before they put it on YouTube, they, they cut out the most awkward moments. Um, but you can definitely still tell how nervous I am if you go back and watch it now. Um, and, and that experience, while it was horrible and amazing at the same time, um, it really, it really showed me that when you're message, when you're passionate enough about your message, it doesn't matter how scared you are. Even if you say it with a shaking voice, it's, it will help you get that message out to the people. So if you're speaking about something you're passionate about, just remember that the message is more important than your comfort. And so it, it really helped me get that message out. Um, it ended up being you know, a very, very successful talk. Uh, it made a huge impact and I saw that impact immediately because they have a little area outside of, um, outside like in the exhibit hall uh, the auditorium area where you set up a booth for TEDx SMU, and at the booth I had like a cool like 3D system of the spine that you could swing around with an iPad on a big screen. Um, I had quizzes about my talk, so it was about innate intelligence, about the nervous system, about um, chiropractic, and these kids were coming up, and basically they're nerdy kids because they were at a TEDx event, right? And so uh, it, they wanted to take the quiz. And I said, if you get 100, you go on the wall of fame, which is, I literally just taped them to the wall behind me. Um, but these kids were going on this quiz, and they were getting the answers all right about what is a chiropractor? What do they do? Where, like, what is the superpower? Um, you know, where, does the, where does the intelligence of the body live? Like, all this stuff. And I was just blown away at how many of these kids listened and understood and got the point. Um, and now since then, the, the talk's been shared just a, a number and number of times. Um, and I'm really, really glad that I had the opportunity to do it. And it was something that came out of, uh, something I didn't want to do. You know, I did not want to go to that networking event. I, I was absolutely totally against it, but I went, you know, I just said, yes, I did it. I was an uncomfortable process the entire time, but, uh, it ended up being absolutely remarkable. Um, and then when I moved to Coeur d'Alene, I had the opportunity to do a second one, um, that one was about millennials and our entrepreneurial spirit. Um, and now I'm actually uh, involved in, and help organize TEDx Coeur d'Alene. Not, I don't help organize. I help on a small role. Um, Cassidy actually helps organize TEDx Coeur d'Alene. And so we're, uh, we're helping to propagate that and expand that through our community as well. So it's been a hell of a journey. So really quickly before the next question, uh, did you find it any easier or more difficult to talk to an audience of kids instead of adults? Just out of curiosity. That's a really, really, really good question. Um, I think I found it easier because I knew that those kids um, were there for the right reason. They were there because they desperately wanted to be there. They had to, I believe they had to apply uh, for, for like and write an essay in order to get like a scholarship through their school to be there. So they're all there because they really, really wanted to be there. Um, I also knew that they were all really interested and I also knew that they didn't know more than me, which was really great. Mm-hmm. Um, that, which gave me a lot of confidence because nobody was going to, nobody was going to call me out. That's not actually true. Um, it was a little bit more difficult because if they didn't like what I was saying, 
they would like just straight there was no no guilt about just like not straight not paying attention you know so if i was like looking at kids they'd be like laughing on their phone over there or something like that um uh, but all in all definitely easier than talking to adults and i know that you've uh since you're two and a half years out of practice you've had uh, a few more opportunities to get onto stages and speak to people and tell people your story, but not to the TEDx group, but actually to chiropractic groups. Um, what has that been like for you? It's been a blast. Uh, what I've found over that journey is that I think each and every person, um, each and every chiropractor, each and every chiropractic student has something of value that they can share for people um, because there's been a lot of times where I've gone up on stage thinking that you know I don't I don't really know what I have to give these people uh, I don't I don't know if it's gonna be a value I don't know if what I'm gonna talk about is really even gonna make a difference to anybody or, or impact anyone um, I'll just I'll talk about you know a struggle in practice or I'll talk about you know a passion or I'll talk about uh, marketing or I'll talk about an idea that I had or something like that you know in all across all these different opportunities I've never actually talked about the same thing twice um, every single time I've ever gotten up on stage over the last couple of years has been brand new I put it together normally in like the 48 hours before I got on stage um, but it was all just something from the heart and what I've found is that every time hands down people come and find me somebody comes and finds me afterwards and says I needed I needed to hear that that was exactly what I needed I man I that really resonated with me or wow I've been thinking about that and you saying it just really made all the difference um, and so I don't think I necessarily am any more or less special than anyone else who gets up and speaks or anything like that um, I think every single person who gets up on stage has something that a value that they share um, and I've been very blessed to feel that the things I've been able to share over the last couple of years have been impactful for impactful for people um, and so it's been it's been quite the journey the travel has been a little bit tiresome um, especially being in practice full-time and you know needing to like what like a taking a crazy busy week because we would compress it a little bit flying traveling getting somewhere it's speaking or teaching uh, and then jumping right back on, you know, normally like going out, drinking, hanging out with people, having a super late night, then getting back on a plane, coming back, going right back into practice and everything um, was just, it was, it's, it's exhausting. But for those moments when I'm up on stage and those moments afterwards where I'm seeing the impact it had, uh, it was really, really, really special for me. And I'm really thankful for the opportunities I've had to do that. So... Do you have any favorite mantras or motivational quotes that keep you going as a chiropractor? I think I have too many that keep me going, actually. What's your favorite? Quotes and quote books are like some of my, my favorite things in the world. Um, I would say one of the, there's a number of them. Um, one of my favorites that I, I use constantly when, when you say to keep you going. Um, so on the days when I don't want to get up when I'm exhausted, when I, you know, when I don't want to put forward that extra effort, um, it's do what others don't want to do today to have, or to have what others won't have tomorrow. Um, and for me, from like the chiropractic entrepreneur side, it's where I think about, you know, I, I know it's, I know I'm exhausted. Uh, my body's exhausted. My mind is exhausted, but I'm gonna like I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna go to practice today. I'm gonna do my absolute best to do my best to take care of people, um, and I'm gonna push. And um, then tonight I'm gonna go to that event. I'm gonna be out meeting people and continuing to network. I'm gonna go to that thing that event on Saturday that we sponsored. I'm gonna be there, and it can become, you know, for for lack of better words, the grind. Uh, but that that mantra keeps me in the mindset of I'm doing this for a reason I'm not just doing this to do it I'm not going through the motions I'm doing it to create a practice that will have a massive impact in my community I'm doing it to be able to be in a place where I can have associates 
and have some more freedom and, and be able to take a little bit less time and, and take a little bit off of my plate. I'm doing it to eventually have independence in you know five ten years to where the practice can be running and I can maybe you know be speaking more or be in the community being an advocate for chiropractic and and working from my laptop in the sun in the park or whatever I want to do uh, it's it's the the things that we do today that make the difference for what we'll have and be able to do tomorrow um, and so that's been a mindset and mantra of mine from day one yeah, man, and uh, you know the thing is, is I really understand that that grind too. And we call it the hustle. Absolutely, that's, you know, really, Keep really the essence of <laughs> that's really the essence of Cairo hustle. And you know, Luke will probably be able to agree with this statement, but you know, what we've experienced as a team of going around and doing speaking and doing interviews and meeting people and networking, um, we we can probably both say that. We know what it's like for for that to be a real feeling is to, you know, doing the late night and then getting back and then recording three interviews on a Monday and then, you know, scheduling ourselves out for the next like two weeks to where we have uh, seven lives and five recordings. And, you know, it, it, it is a, a lot to, you know, be in the network of chiropractic and to support the beautiful profession. Absolutely. And I mean, believe me, the profession thanks and appreciates you all for doing that, too. Thank you. Oh, thanks. So what's possible in your future with everything you're doing and accomplishing? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I think, it, to be cliche, I think anything is possible. Um, I kind of live my life thinking anything is possible. There's been a lot of things in my in my life, like from opening the practice to you know moving to a new community to really actually opening a practice focused for young professionals and millennials um, that a lot of people didn't think was very possible, uh, but we did it anyways. And so I would say um, the next things that I hope to push towards uh, are creating creating a sustainable practice that I can spend time in, but I can also not spend time in and have it running smoothly. Um, more of that system-based practice rather than a you know personality-driven practice. Uh, we have a great um, intern and associate, her name's Rebecca, um, and she graduated from Life West uh, in June, and she's training up right now. She's starting to adjust people alongside of me, uh, and so we're, we're really working to help create some space and some freedom in the practice. Cassidy has done such an amazing job as office manager, practice manager, um, creating systems and procedures and policies so that even when she's not there, everything gets done um, because of the rest of our team. We have an uh, incredible um, front desk and admin, her name's Kelly, and, and we want to create an atmosphere where it's a well-oiled machine and things are reproducible. Uh, and so that way, as the years come, um, I would love to spend more time advocating for chiropractic in my community and across the country and across the globe uh, to because I truly feel as though that's one of my strengths. Um, I, I think I'm incredible at connecting with people and communicating chiropractic and chiropractic message. Uh, and so while I still want Beyond Bones Chiropractic to be a flagship and the leader and the chiropractic leader in my community here, um, I would like for that to continue while I am still um, out in the area of the community doing more and more to help, honestly, change the paradigm of healthcare. My why is to change the paradigm of healthcare, and that's going to start with Coeur d'Alene. Um, and then hopefully Idaho, and then the Northwest, and then the U.S., and then the world. Um, and so that's brick by brick that we lay the foundation for that plan. Um, and we also one of the newest things is Cassidy and I are actually working together as student mentors for Kairo Sushi and for the Kairo Sushi Samurai. And so we've been actually filming videos, making content specifically for students because that's one of the passions that we both have. Um, and I certainly have is helping lift chiropractic students up to do better and better, be better, stand on the shoulders of those who have came before them and launch into practice. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons I'm very blessed. Like I go uh, and travel to Life U once a quarter and do the business capstone course, um, helping those students be more and more successful. Uh, and now through Samurai, Cassie and I are going to be working really, really hard to help students 
be as successful as they want to be uh, right out of school and not make the same mistakes that we did. Because while I think, while I definitely know we don't have all the answers, um, we have a lot of things that we did well that we're, we're, we can't wait to share. And there's also a lot of things that normally me did terribly that we learned from and survived from that we want to help others not do. Um, and not make those same mistakes that we did. So I think working with the students uh, and continuing to spread that chiropractic message throughout the globe uh, are where I see my potential going. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Universal Traction Systems, Vantage Point Marketing, Imaging Services, Zingit Solutions, Cairo Thin, Dr. Peter Goldman's Zone School of Healing, and Everest Chiropractic Boot Camp. Let's hustle. Yeah, you know, it's funny to me. Um, it wasn't until I started hearing some of your talks that uh, I realized I'm a millennial. And so I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet because it's such a shock to me, but... Uh, <laughs> Hey, you're one of the millennials that is helping to break the stereotypes, sir. Mm. Well, and thank so you. we need and love and appreciate you uh, because there are a lot of incredible, motivated millennials doing awesome things like yourself who the world needs to see uh, to understand that we're not all just a bunch of shitheads. So. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and, so, you know, I'm kind of like an uh, odd man out of here. I don't think I'm a millennial. <laughs> I, I, do, you, I would not maybe think. I mean, if you want to claim it, we'll we'll claim you. But I think you'd be closer to Gen X. <laughs> I'm an I'm an Xer man. And, uh, it's cool though. It's cool to see how you've uh, partitioned the uh, framework of how you present and who your audience is. I think that's really wise on your end to know your audience and to be able to address them and to build your practice around your ideal target market and to understand how you want to serve uh, and who you want to serve. And I think Absolutely. that that's, that's key because so many chiropractors are like, I'll just take anybody. I don't care. It's, oh, it's, I know. Yeah, I'll take them. Uh, if, it's, if, it's a, if it's whatever, I'll take it. I don't care. Uh, Medicare, Medicaid, I don't care. I'll take it. And uh, then people start attracting a tribe of people that they're taking care of that they don't communicate with and they don't know uh, how to interact with. Oh, and they're miserable doing it. You know, and that's – it's it's a travesty and it's probably one that is completely rampant through chiropractic. Uh, and it's it's true it's unfortunate to see um, and I think it's a lack of empowerment to chiropractors to know that they can say no and they can say I am of value and I can be of value to who I want to connect and take care of um, and they don't need to bend every which way to make everybody happy because if you try to be everything for everybody, you're going to be nothing to anyone. So you kind of answered this question already in a way, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Uh, the way things are going right now, and if they kind of continue on this path, where do you see the chiropractic profession in about 20 years? I think the chiropractic profession is going to be in 10 times better a position than it is now. Nice. Um, and I say that. I'll, I'm going to say one controversial statement, and that will be because there'll be a lot more dead people. <laughs> now, where, where am I going with this? I know you want to know. Because in 20 years, a majority of those 70 and 80 and older are going to have passed away. And that will obviously be sad and unfortunate. But I would also say that, that the older generation um, – is kind of one of the last generations that got the, I would call it brainwashing, um, through most of their upbringing about what chiropractic is or isn't, what it, and you know, how it's terrible or whatever. Um, and so I think that a lot of the misconceptions and a lot of the negative stigma is going to start to fade away. As you see more and more younger people, younger doctors, younger MDs, younger surgeons, younger PTs, everything, they're starting to be far, far more accepting and excited about chiropractic. So, so there's take away some of the, I guess, things against us. 
But I'm not really, I don't really like talking about things against us. I like talking about things for us. And so on the for us side is you have a generation of people, I'll, I'll specifically start with millennials, who are so desperate and so ready for chiropractic, then they just don't know it yet. The millennial generation is far more holistic. They're far more apt to seek answers for health problems outside of a pill bottle. They're, they don't have the you know, trust the MD over all else mantra and mindset that many of the older generations do. Um, they look to their friends, they look to the internet, they look to social media for answers to healthcare questions. These are all spaces that chiropractic, I feel like, is very, is in fact leading as compared to PT or MDs or anything else. Um, I feel like more than anything, chiropractic is mark, starting to market and be appealing in ways that communicate with younger generations. Um, the white space of social media, for example, uh, maybe it's just because of how my news feed is, but I see it far more chiropractic than I see uh, prescription ads or anything else. Um, and so I think we're in a great position as a profession to capitalize on a shift in the mindset of the population. We're shifting away from the older generation's mindset and we're shifting towards the younger generation's mindset and chiropractic is perfectly poised to capitalize on that. We're ready and well, I should say I, I hope we're ready and the millennial generation is ready and the younger generations are ready and so if you fast forward 20 years if we do what I think we can do and I think we will do as a profession I feel like a vast majority of of the people will either see a chiropractor regularly or will at least have a positive opinion about chiropractic rather than a majority having a negative or an in, in, inaccurate uh, opinion of chiropractic. Uh, and so in 20 years, I would love to see chiropractic being the norm and, and not, you know, not the norm of like, oh, well, we'll be, we'll finally be recognized as real doctors. Ah, screw that. Like, I don't even care about that. When I say norm, I mean, of, well, of course I get checked. Like, you know, subluxation's serious. It's like cavities. It's like anything else in that, except it, it truly can affect your health on a grand level. Like, of course my kids get checked after birth. We, everybody gets regularly checked by a chiropractor. Um, and while I don't think that we'll be at the 100% population standpoint in 20 years, um, I definitely think we're going to start to see an exponential increase in the amount of people utilizing it. And that's just because of the generational mindset shift. And I'm happy you shared some of the things that you did there, Ryan, because it brought up some uh, um, integral talking points. And one of those is dogma. And as the older generations start to slip away with age, um, the new generations come up and the dogma shifts. Yep. And we start thinking about um, what it is to have a better quality of life for our friends and family. We think about what it is to tell somebody the ideas that um, they can have a better, um, you know, you can work out better if you get adjusted. Yeah. And you, you can uh, enjoy whatever you plan on doing um, better because your, uh, your spine's in a line. You know, there's so much that we can talk about when the dogma of the mindset shifts. Right. But, you know, one of, one of the other things that you touched on there was, you know, people looking for the, the proactive measure of staying healthy long term. And I think that when people start to look at the proactive measure of staying healthy long term, it's an investment. And I think that our, our generations are going to be more into the mindset of we're going to invest in whatever it takes to have a better quality of life than waiting till that day where we finally work 30 years and we get a vacation. Absolutely. We want to <laughs> Absolutely. We're already seeing we're already seeing the younger generations making that investment. Um, you know, they work out far more than older generations did. They look at the rise in yoga popularity, in freaking smoothie bar popularities, in uh, health foods, in organic stores, and all this stuff. It's all on the rise. You know, nobody gave a crap about that stuff 40 years ago, or very few people gave a crap about that stuff 40 years ago. And so, you have these generations now that are younger that want to eat avocado toast and they want they love their green smoothie and they love all this stuff because 
they see the value in protecting this body that they were given instead of throwing it at a desk or throwing it in a factory for 40 years to get your gold watch and then live. I think previous generations spent a lot of time and, well, spent a lot of health to get time and money and are now spending a lot of time and money to get their health. Whereas I think a lot of now younger generations are, are keeping that balance in a lot better position. Yeah, you know, the things you say there, I, I can't wait till everybody gets to that threshold in this conversation, but to understand that that's really what it's all about. And really, that's why uh, the undertone of what you said is why I decided to jump full feet into the chiropractic profession is because I saw the future. I, I forecast that the future of chiropractic is so bright that I wanted to be one of the early pioneers of the media age that was doing something to put the chiropractic before profession into the right light and with yes. the right type of conversation. I wanted to change the cultural conversation around chiropractic to where it became mainstream. And I think that that's... When, when we look into 20 years from now and we realize that the early pioneer work that Luke and I are doing with the chiropractic truth is we're going to start setting people free because we're delivering people the right content and the right information. We're having conversations like this one, the one we're having with you today, that's going to go out there and it's going to let chiropractic live outside the four walls of chiropractic and rightfully you know, position chiropractic where it's supposed to be and it's not some thing of yesteryear that you go to when you know you have your baby has uh whatever it might be you know acid reflux it's going to yeah. be like yeah i don't want my baby to get acid reflux i'm right. going to get that baby checked on birthday right <laughs> absolutely and, and i love that and i what one of my i guess one of my biggest accolades and combinations for you two um is that you have started to like you said get chiropractic out of the four walls of chiropractic like we're really, really great about talking about each other to each other um, and within each other. We're really, really bad about getting anything we have to say out of the bubble and out to the world um, in a digestible and watchable manner. Um, and so I really, really appreciate the work you guys have done with the documentaries that you've created and how mainstream those have become and how those have really been targeted at people not in chiropractic. Like, cause we, we're never going to really blow up if we keep telling each other how great it is. We got to tell other people. So I appreciate you guys for that. Yeah. And the first documentary still has quite a distance to reach. I think we just haven't, oh, yeah. we haven't been marketing it as hard as we could have cause we've just been so busy. Yeah. So <laughs> tell us about some of your key marketing strategies, how just kind of recap how you got your office to blow up so much. Oh man, um, a num there's a number of marketing strategies that we use, um, but I think if there was a bedrock or cor cornerstone that those marketing strategies are built on, it's built on cornerstones of authenticity, transparency, and true connection. Um, and that goes across everything. That in and of itself, I think is a marketing strategy, um, being authentic and transparent and building relationships. Uh, but that goes across our social media. Um, that was a really big one for me um, to help, I guess, exponentially increase the amount of exposure that I had when I first moved to Coeur d'Alene. Because uh, while I could be at events, and let's say I meet 100 people at an event, I would also post about being at that event or share a video while at that event, and now I would reach a thousand people or five thousand people. Um, same with the meetings I would go to. Let's say I had a meeting with um, uh, John Butler, was is somebody who here in Coeur d'Alene is a very well connected, influential person. Let's say I have I go to my meeting with John Butler because I'm getting to know him, and I'm taking notes again based on on real relationships, so I'm not telling him all about me and chiropractic and how great it is. I'm listening and I'm, I'm asking things like, how did you get to where you are in our community? Who should I know in that community? Um, what do you recommend I be a part of? What are some great organizations to support? Uh, you know, what lessons did you learn? What mistakes did you make to, to really cement yourself in our town? 
all right, so I'm taking all these notes, I'm learning things, and then I'd, I'd maybe like asterisk or highlight if you had you know, a really, really good piece of advice. After the meeting or when the meeting's done, uh, a lot of times I would normally say, hey, you know, can, I, can I get a picture with you? I'm like, sure, absolutely, why not, right? So we get a picture. Or I take a picture of um, the quote that he, that he gave me or something like that, a piece of advice. And then on my social media, I would post about meeting with him. I would share that piece of advice it would be you know, a very complimentary post and, and very flattering, if you will. And then I would make sure to tag him, tag his business, tag you know, where we went to eat, tag anything and everything that I could. Because now John's going to get that notification on his Facebook that says, hey, Ryan Bones mentioned you in a post. But, oh, wow, cool. Oh, well, that's very, very nice. I will accept that tag and I will allow that on my timeline. Now, really unbeknowingly, he just put my face, um, us meeting in front of his entire Facebook audience by going on his timeline or on his feed, right? Um, on his profile. So now I just basically kind of hacked his friends and his friend list to see me meeting with him. And you do that enough times with enough key influencers in your community, pretty soon you got a whole heck of a lot of people that have been seeing your face with influencers in the town going, who is that guy? Why is he with why is he with everybody important? When 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 is he gonna call me? I wanna meet I wanna meet with this guy. Like i and that's what happened. I started getting requests of like, hey, I see you're going to lunch with everybody. Like, you know, uh, would you know I, I would love to meet with you too. I'm like, uh, okay, sweet. Uh, and each and every time I would ask at the end of the at the end of our lunch or our coffee or whatever, and say, Who are five people that you think I need to know in this community? And they'd give me names. And I wouldn't, you know, I don't need contact or information. Or it was 2016, I could find it. Um, and I would say, would it be okay if I, you know, used your name when I asked to meet them? Like, well, sure, yeah, of course. So now I go to my list and I say, hey, Bob, John said that you'd be a fantastic person to meet in this community. I'm new, I'm gonna be opening a business, I'm gonna be putting Ruth down, building a family here. Uh, he said you've been very successful, and I was wondering if I could just ask you a couple questions. Uh, sure, why not? And so now I just use that to literally kind of spider web out with all, a lot of key influencers in town, not only meeting with them and making an impression on them, but also sharing that to be very visible about doing that. Um, and pretty soon that my name started to trickle down into conversations. It started to come up for recommendations for board positions. It started to it started to be nominated for um, like awards for community awards, all by just meeting people and and leveraging social media to be visible doing that um, and doing it well and it all weaved back into the story I was telling about my journey on social media. And that's one thing I think a lot of people make a mistake on on social media is. They just, you know, they just post the stock photos, or they just, you know, post branded stuff, or they just, they, they, they post some content or whatever. But there's no story. There's no intrigue. When I started that journey of opening up my practice, I posted stuff about like, you know, oh man, like this is what I'm doing today. This is what I'm working towards. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing with my life. Follow along. Come see the highs, come see the lows, and celebrate the joy and the and the triumph and the trials of opening a practice and opening a business and establishing yourself in a community. And people just loved it. And that's how my following really blew up. And I got to use that quote unquote marketing strategy. Uh, was people became invested in what was happening. They couldn't wait to tune in to what Bones doing this week, which is ridiculous when I say it out loud, but. People fell in love with the story. It's like a soap opera or, you know, your reality TV. Why do you tune in to watch it? Because you're interested, right? And so be, write a story, weave it together, share that story with people, the highs and the lows, um, make those real connections and leverage social media to be more visible. And you will be shocked at how many people start calling your office. Not because you told them to call your office or because they, you know, they, they found your card or they, they you know, saw it, like whatever, whatever, whatever. It was because maybe they were talking to their mom about how their, you know, let's say their back hurt 
and their mom happened to see me do a video on Facebook or sat next to me at a chamber luncheon and she said, hey, you should you should go see that, that Beyond Bones, that Ryan Bones. Oh, why? Have, have you been there? Is it is it good? Oh, no, I don't know. I've never been there, but he just he seems like a great guy and he really knows what he's talking about. I just think you should go there. And then pretty soon, 10 people tell him that and they come into the office. Not because of any special promotion or any special deal or ad, but just because you have built such a name and a, and a brand and an authority in the community as a person who cares about people and is invested in people and knows what the hell they're talking about that pretty soon everybody comes to you because, well, where else would they go? Because everybody recommends you. And that's what we found. Uh, and it was not necessarily a strategy from the start, but damn, it worked well. Well, I absolutely love that you say all that stuff and that you shared that story. And what I picked up on most out of that was, um, do you remember the 14,000-foot uh, mountain I hiked up two years Absolutely. ago? Absolutely. Of course sure I remember topic. that. Do you remember the second one I did? Yes. <laughs> well, you're because you're a badass and you climb mountains. Again. <laughs> <laughs> but I wore your shirt up there, and what I do is I tagged you. Yes. And it attached us together. And when that showed up in your timeline, people said, whoa, Ryan Bones and Jim Chester are connected. That's a really cool synergy in this chiropractic space. And to up, up that one level is that's why we interview everybody in the chiropractic marketplaces because when we do this interview with you and we post it, it goes to your timeline and everybody can say, huh, Ryan Bones did a hustle with Jim and Luke with Cairo Hustle. That's awesome. And that's why we go to all these major events is because now we have become what you did in your local yes. community. But we're doing it at a global level on the chiropractic scene. Yes. Is you become the authority. Your strategies. We're taking your strategies to where people now reach out to us and say, "Hey, can I do an interview with you?" Yes. Guys? How cool is that? And it, it, that's that's such a it's such a shift, and it's <laughs> from putting in the time and effort and the long nights and the long interviews and everything that we talked about earlier, uh, to where now you've got such a wave of momentum going that you're damn near surfing on it. And you know that's the the beautiful thing about what you shared is you share what can happen inside of a closed community that you want to make maximum impact on. Yep. And then what you see with what we're doing is we're making impact inside of a closed community that we want to make impact yep. in. But it depends on how social you are on social. And that's one of the things that you really touched on there was to become familiar, become likable, become referable, and to be somebody in your community that people will say, man, you know what? That Ryan Bones, I don't know really if he's a good chiropractor, but he's an awesome guy. Yes. And I don't I don't really know what Jim Chester does, but darn, he's everywhere and he's an awesome guy. Yes. <laughs> I, I tell people all the time, I get more we get more referrals in our in our office from people who have not been here than from people who have. It's pretty close. It's about 50-50. We also get a lot of incredible referrals from people who have been here because we do a good job of taking care of people. Uh, but on a grander level, we also have a ton of people who refer here, just like you said. They haven't been here and personally experienced it. They just know a lot of people who have and know that it went really, really well and then also met me and, and had that a great experience. And so they're comfortable sending their friends and family to us because they have a relationship with me and know just based on that relationship that I won't bullshit their friends, that I will take good care of them. And so that's really what people need to refer is that comfort level to know that you're going to take care of people they send there. Because you're not going to send somebody to somebody if you think they're a jackass. You're going to send somebody somewhere because you know that they'll be well taken care of. And I think that has a lot more to do with the personality of the chiropractor and your heart than it does your hands. And so while both play a part, have a good heart. So tell us a little bit about you personally. In, in any kind of spare time that you may have, what kind of things do you like to listen to or read or maybe watch? How do you feed your brain? Oh, man. And it's, it's important to have those things. That's what I've been finding lately is uh, for a long time, I didn't feed my own brain. I did not feed myself. Um, I would always be given everything to everybody. And, and truly, it was detrimental to me for a while. And so I finally started trying to literally key out and most importantly schedule in 
time for me. Like literally on my Google Calendar, like put time for me. Um, and the things that I have found lately that fill my cup the most, number one is just spending downtime with Cassidy, just spending time like with my wife, not working on stuff, not working in the practice, not pushing, not being out at events, but just just hanging around her. Um, one thing I am extremely thankful for is that I found a partner that when I am around her, I feel my, my energy levels charging. Like I just feel happier and more at peace. And she like, I can be having a super shit day. Um, and it takes 10 minutes of just spending time around here to feel happy again. Um, and so spending time with her has been a big one. Um, also for me spending time in nature uh which thankfully where we live up here in Coeur d'Alene is absolutely incredibly breathtakingly gorgeous um uh, and so that that can be as simple as driving down uh you know a path to the river we have a we have a gorgeous lake and a gorgeous river um and just driving down to the river and just sitting like sometimes I will just sit in my car like where you can almost like pull up to the water like sit in my car with the windows down, the car off and the radio off and just sit and just like listen to the sound of the water and listen to the sound of like the, the nature. Uh, and I feel like I can breathe easier. Like, I feel like it's, it's my, it's my church. It's my happy place. Um, same with like any time that I can get out on a boat, um, and just be on the lake is a happy place for me. Um, snowboarding is a happy place for me going up the lift when it's dead quiet and you just hear snow falling, um, that is a happy place for me. Uh, when it comes to actually trying to intentionally feed my brain, uh, been working on listening to a couple podcasts and listening to or end up reading a couple books. One of my favorite podcasts right now is um, Andy Frisella's MF CEO podcast. I think it just became like the like the one of like the number one. I don't know, like business podcasts or like entrepreneurial podcast. Um, I just saw you posted about that. Uh, if you don't mind vulgar language and want a good kick in the teeth to get your day going and get motivated, um, Andy Frisella, MFCEO podcast is awesome. Um, sometimes I'll listen to that in the morning when I'm getting ready or in the car or something like that. Uh, and then with what I'm reading is, well, I'm finishing reading from uh, my vacation this summer uh, is – Brene Brown's Daring Greatly, actually, uh, which is a book about vulnerability, uh, which has truly made far bigger of an impact on me than I actually thought it would. Because Cassidy read it, she had to like stop reading it multiple times because she was crying and was just like seriously self-reflecting on her on her life. Um, and I was like, oh, it can't be that. It can't be that. You know, that crazy, right? But as I've been uh, reading to it and listening to it on Audible, there's been a lot of moments where I'm going, oh, shit. <laughs> like, why am, I, why am I doing that? Why do I do that? Like, it, it makes you ask yourself a lot of hard questions, and it makes you reflect a lot on what you do and why you do it, truly. And that's definitely ripped open some, some, uh, some tissue on me and my heart a little bit. Um, but it's been extremely beneficial because I've started to change why and how I do things. Um, and then another one is The One Thing, uh, which, dang, I can't remember the author of that one. One Thing, but it's called The One Thing. And it was essentially the idea of um, do do one thing, do it really freaking well, and build your life kind of around on that, on that idea. That doesn't mean you have to do it, you know, all the time, but if you have five things that you do or you're trying to do, you're going to basically, each one's going to get a fifth of your attention and your focus and your time uh, and your thought process and like just energy from the universe. Um, and so I've really tried to narrow in where my mind has been, uh, mainly outside of the practice. Thankfully, we do one thing. We do it better than anybody else at Beyond Mother's Chiropractic. That's take care of the spine, remove subluxation. Um, but outside of practice, I have a lot of other stuff going on. And it's... It, between daring greatly, asking myself why the hell I'm doing what I'm doing, and then that book, I've been ruthlessly cutting out things in my life that don't serve and feed me um, because I found that I was doing a lot of things that didn't. And it's allowed time 
for spending time with Cassidy and time in nature and snowboarding and things that I do enjoy doing. Um, so check out those. I recommend them. Awesome. Well, we are just about out of time, but before we all jump off the line, what are some online resources you could give people if they wanted to know more about you or your office or your TED Talks or anything else that you have going on? Oh, um, absolutely. All kinds of them. Uh, I would say for me, uh, I mean, you can, you can find me on Facebook, Brian Bones. You can find me on Instagram uh, at beyond underscore bones. Um, our office Instagram is at go beyond bones. Um, our website is go beyond bones.com. Uh, we have some videos on there and on our Facebook page, beyond bones chiropractic. Um, we're in Idaho. There's one in Florida. Uh, we're the one in Idaho and, uh, they got some videos on there to kind of see why, what we do in the practice and why we do it that way. Um, outside of personally, um, definitely check out Kairo Sushi and the Kairo Sushi Samurai as far as what we're doing there from a mentorship standpoint. Um, Cassidy and I are really diving in for the students for that. So if you're students, highly recommend you guys check out the Samurai. Get in touch with me. Just message me um, or message Tristan um, and find out kind of what opportunities we have for you to get involved with that. Or even if you want me to come down to a school or something like that, you know, just hit me up. Come talk to me. Uh, and you can find me on, on Messenger, shoot me a message on Messenger, um, or you can send me an email, bones at kairosushi.com or tristan at kairosushi.com. Either one of us can uh, can get connected with you. Um, and so check those programs, check out the Samurai, check out the programs, and then uh, I guess be on the lookout next year for the next Kairo Sushi Summit, uh, which I think there's a lot of still to be determined about that, but it's going to be really good no matter where it is. So um, all in all, I really just, I strive to be a resource for anybody and everybody that I possibly can be. And so if you have a question or if you want you know, more information on anything that I talked about or just how you can do anything that I talked about or whatever, um, or if you have a struggle, you know, don't be afraid to reach out and, and ask that question because uh, there's a lot of people struggling out there. I know there are. Um, and so many chiropractors die uh, on an island by themselves um, sheerly out of ego. And so... Uh, don't be that guy or gal reach out We're, we'll be happy to help you in any way we can now is there anything that you wanted to touch on that we did not ask you about you know what i get asked a lot but it is my real hair so <laughs> i just want i just want to i want to clear that up right now fantastic <laughs> i'm so glad we got it we... otherwise i think uh, i think everything is taken care of man it's been awesome getting to talk to you guys yeah this was fun yeah, it's been a lot of fun for me, too, and uh, I know that you're not too far away from Grand Junction, so we need to make our uh, self a journey up there. We've talked about it now for a couple of years, coming up there to Coeur d'Alene, seeing you guys up there. Come up in the summer. Yeah, road yeah, trip. Believe me. Yeah, come up in the summer. Uh, we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll go golfing. We'll go on the lake. We'll do something. It is, it's an amazing place to visit. Uh, anybody else, any of the students or anything want to come shadow or anything, hit me up, too. We'll come up, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll take care of you guys. It'd be awesome. Awesome. Well, Ryan, I want to thank you so much for doing this interview with us today, and I know it was probably one of our better ones. <laughs> hey, I, I, I aim, to, aim to serve and aim to please. I'm happy to deliver. Yeah, and thank you, Ryan. Thank you for spending some time with us because we know how, much, uh, how valuable your time is and uh, how committed you are to uh, running that practice with Cassidy up there. So thanks for making some time for us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I always love it and uh, always available for you all. Awesome. awesome. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, Dr. Bones, and we will see you next time. We'll see you next time. Keep hustling. We'll keep hustling, yes. All right, brother. See ya. <laughs>